You're listening to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast from Top Music. Tune in weekly as we interview music teachers and experts from around the world to explore creative activities and ideas that build learning connections in students. Our integrated music teaching approach will deepen your students' understanding of musical concepts, engage them in critical thinking, improve their reading and performance, foster their curiosity, and prepare them for a lifetime of music making. Hello teachers, it's Tim here again and thanks for tuning in to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast. Whether it's a first episode for you or a 332nd episode, it's super to be able to hang out with you and thank you for giving me your time. I do hope you're enjoying our show so far this year. Now today you are just here with me, no guests, because we have a really exciting announcement coming up both this week and next week. In fact, this week, uh, sorry, this month is all about uh, two exciting new developments we have here at Top Music. One is what I'm talking about today, which is our Presto framework. And secondly, all about our certification program, which is about to go into a beta or a pilot mode which we're very excited about. And that I'm going to tell you more about next week. This week is all about Presto and I'm really keen to dive in and share a little bit more about what this is and why we've created it. Firstly, I wanted to give away a weekly freebie. Uh, This week's weekly freebie is our Creativities Kickstarters pack. So, as you know, I've been researching and sharing creative ideas for use of the piano for, this is my 13th year now. And over that time, I've distilled down to about five or six really cool, simple activities that kids absolutely love that any teacher can do with just about any student at any stage with very little preparation. And what I've done is I've put together my Creativity Kickstarters. It's a pack of five plus one bonus, so it's actually six, one-page creative ideas to use at the keyboard. And they are all my best ideas. They are super fun. Kids love them. Adults love them actually as well. And you can get them all for free. How cool is that? So if you haven't got the Creativity Kickstarter pack, then head over to topmusic.co slash Kickstarter to grab your download. It'd be great to um, get them in your hands and have you sharing them with your students. I know you're going to have lots of fun. And importantly, more than just fun, the kinds of things that the Kickstarters engage and immerse students in are all things that are going to help with their development as musicians, all-round musicians, and their reading and their performance and their sight reading and all those fantastic things. All right, today's review is from Bertie. Not really sure how to pronounce this person's name. Uh, The title was Fun, Exciting and Fabulous Resource for All Piano Teachers. Uh, And here's what they said. I found Topcast about three years ago when I was looking for inspiration in my piano teaching Full of inspirational guests from around the world, Tim offers the piano teacher a one-stop shop to explore and connect with leading piano teachers around the world. My mind opened up to the many wonders of innovative teaching ideas and have made every day my teaching more joyful. So, thank you very much for sharing that review. If you're listening and you recognize that that's your writing, please send us an email, support at topmusic.co so that we can afford you a small thank you gift because we can't obviously see emails from our Apple reviews. Uh, And as always, if you have been getting value from the podcast, and I know many, many thousands of you have, uh, and many thousands of episodes have been downloaded. In fact, we're getting close to our millionth download, which is very cool. Uh, And you haven't had the time to leave a review. We would love to hear from you. And it does help us get the word out more about the things we share on this show. So if you haven't done that yet and you're not sure how, Uh, You can just Google how to leave a podcast review or head to topmusic.co slash iTunes where we've laid it all out for you. It's super easy. should take less than five minutes and we really appreciate it. So, over the last couple of years, we've been working on a few exciting undertakings at Top Music uh, and one of the biggest ones has been the development of our own certification program. So, I'm going to tell you all about that next week. That's going to be our focus of the episode. And what makes this a -a one-of-a-kind program next week? So, stay tuned for that. It's a really big announcement. And as we get closer to welcoming in our first teachers into that program, uh, which will be happening in July 2023, uh, this will be open to Top Music Pro members initially in this first cohort. So, if you're not a Top Music Pro member, that's fine. You can, of of course, join us if you would like, but uh, there's no pressure to do that. You can wait, uh, but the first public cohort uh, outside of membership will be with an intake 
in December for a January cohort start. So look out for that. I'll be sharing much more information about that towards the end of this year. But one of the challenges that we've always experienced at Top Music, and I imagine other teachers who share resources for music teachers probably end up in this same category, is that teachers join us with a whole range of experiences, a whole lot of different background and goals for the future. So we'll have teachers with all levels of experience ranging from pre-teaching, haven't actually taught a student, to 30 or even 50 years or more experience. We help teachers who have wide-ranging goals from, you know, happy to keep it small um, to I want to hire lots of teachers and reach for a 1,000 students a week. We've got some already teaching a number of different instruments in their studio. Some are teaching just one instrument. And we've got varied teaching practices from teachers who are quite confident in jazz, those who are much more classically oriented and those who are more contemporary and people who are a mix of all of those things. So while creating the certification, I knew we needed a framework that summarizes all that we've learned over the last 12 years at Top Music about what makes great teachers and studios and how we can best help anyone joining us at any stage of their teaching. That's a real challenge, right? You can imagine uh, I've really racked my brain over this for quite some time. But we finally put it together and it's a new framework we're calling PRESTO. It's an acronym and the acronym stands for pedagogy, repertoire, educational journey, studio setup, technique, and outreach. And I'm going to explain more about those sections shortly. Um, So today I'm going to take you through the framework of running a successful studio that can guide you towards achieving your goals and dreams and help smooth the road along the journey. This is the, the point of it. The six pillars cement and underpin the studio and business and student success path. Whether the goals for you are small or large, um, and of course, the great thing is that when you're ready, you can get certified in this Presto system through the certification program, which is underpinned by Presto. So the Presto framework answers the question, what do independent studio teachers need to know and do to be successful running a teaching studio in 2023 and beyond? It puts into a simple process the multifaceted way that we help teachers joining our Top Music Pro membership and taking our courses and webinars. It's like a playbook that we use to take instrumental music teachers from you know, just standard teachers to standout success. Uh, you'll be hearing lots more about Presto through the rest of this year as we start to restructure our resources around the model and create new resources that allow teachers to check off what's most, most important in each stage of their growth. So some of the challenges that the Presto framework will help with are experienced teachers lacking credentials. Uh, They're the ones that know how to teach and are successful but want to put a respected course or brand behind their name. We're also going to be helping teachers with no training who perhaps feeling like imposters, lacking confidence, lacking some skills, uh, needing validation, um, especially when everybody thinks what they're doing is a hobby. We're going to be helping teachers who aren't making much money, uh, perhaps because um, they they struggle with the business side of things, not too sure about how to market, um, perhaps not charging enough. Again, feeling feeling that sort of burden of, oh, it's just a hobby, so I can't charge what I should be charging. We're also going to be helping teachers who are currently teaching how they were taught and perhaps struggling a little bit with the innovation and creativity. And perhaps even missing critical theory theory elements and how to integrate that into students learning and making sure you're flexible and being able to approach students from a student-led or student-first perspective and taking on board what they would like to do as well. Um, Also helping teachers who are really struggling because they've got no time with their family because they're teaching all of the evenings and afternoons and also on weekends and also those who are feeling isolated and burnt out. And importantly, this framework we want to share because We would like all teachers to be able to have a way that they can be guided through a process of continual improvement without necessarily having to be a member of our community. So this will be something that we are going to be sharing uh, more publicly. Yes, if you would like to dive deeply into this, you can certainly join our community and then indeed take the certification. But we're going to be sharing lots about how this can be used by any teachers around the world. So what are some of the results that you might be able to get when you follow this framework and potentially do the certification? Well, we're hoping that you're going to be a super confident, happy teacher with successful students and a really great business too. 
and feel confident teaching a student in any situation, including advanced students. Uh, I, f- I find it's really challenging when uh, a lot of teachers who have worked super hard, tirelessly, getting a student to the point of late intermediate and early advanced repertoire and then don't feel that they have the confidence to then take them into the next level. And so all those years, you know, 10 years or eight years, whatever it is of work with that student and the relationship you've built up gets lost. Um, And potentially more advanced students uh, can bring in more revenue as well. So there's a real missed step there. And in fact, we're going to be devoting uh, a month later this year to teaching advanced students and helping give you the confidence to teach advanced level students if that's something that you would like to try. Um, We also hope this framework is going to help teachers understand how they can make enough money to be comfortable without stress uh, and have more flexibility, spending more evenings with family and teaching less on weekends potentially. And just having a studio full of students that you want to teach that are paying you the right amount uh, and a wait list of a few students ready to come in and, and take the place of those who might be moving on at some stage. I guess the way we're framing it is that anyone can use the steps and the concept of the Presto framework to check off how they're going and find out what information they may need to build up areas where they're perhaps lacking in some of those crucial uh, six pillars. And if you want to dive deeper, then you can join Top Music Pro where while you're still doing it yourself, we also provide all the answers to all the questions and the supportive resources to help you tick off all those boxes. And then as a step further on from that, done with you would be our certification program, which where we're actually helping teachers implement the framework uh, and make change over the 12-week cohort. So over on the blog this month, we'll be sharing some case studies of how the Presto framework can guide both a relatively new teacher and also a more experienced teacher. That's coming up this month of June. The goal is that teachers can work through a short checklist of each of the six steps that covers the fundamental aspects of that area of business or pedagogy. And then depending on what they check off or need more help with, we'll be sharing the resources they need to move on to the next step. So it's not in order of importance, uh, but kind of in order of implementation. That's starting with the pedagogy and repertoire and educational journey, perhaps before the studio setup and the outreach. So while it works in order, teachers could skip to different parts of the framework depending on where they're at in their journey. And as I said, it's designed to suit teachers with all studio aspirations, whether that's just teaching three students on the weekend or building to 500 students or more. So let's have a quick look at each of the six pillars. So firstly, P is pedagogy. Pedagogy is the heart and soul of all music teaching. It's what we do, right? So it's the first fundamental step in our Presto system. Teachers will always flounder without a sound understanding of both the history and the modern application of pedagogy for their instrument. So in this pillar, we'll balance the classical and creative approaches and we'll also use the three sub-pillars of the integrated music teaching approach to inform and improve teaching practice. You'll learn how to use flexible lesson plans and facilitate student inquiry and practical activities that foster deep connections between musical elements. Some of the kinds of things you'd want to be checking off is whether you have a student first approach in your teaching, whether you have a question centric approach, do you have an inquiry based approach, are you considering multimodal assessment, are you teaching in a holistic way that includes both the functional and the higher order skills, what I call the tip of the iceberg and the rest of the iceberg, Uh, are you using a creative approach for beginners that doesn't start with method books from lesson one. These are all the kinds of things that are super important in this pedagogy step. Another important part of the pedagogy step is just the studio environment, creating a friendly, welcoming atmosphere for students, including those with special needs, but also taking into consideration things like child protection and student safety, uh, diagnosing new students as they come in. And indeed, in our certification, there's three learning objectives that speak directly to the pedagogy pillar and they are to teach creatively and encourage student creativity from the first lesson. Uh, A second learning objective is to teach musical concepts from a holistic integrated approach and then thirdly the one I mentioned before creating a genuine friendly and welcoming atmosphere for all students. Okay R is for repertoire. All music teaching is based on the music that students learn so getting this right is also vital. This step in the system focuses on choosing repertoire that inspires, that is pedagogically interesting and most importantly aligns with the educational journey, which is the next pillar for each student. 
And pedagogically interesting also means that we have to have an understanding of what the repertoire is trying to achieve. What are the pedagogical themes that are running through this and how do they align with what the student needs? Hi everyone, I wanted to take a moment to let you know about an amazing community of music teachers ready to welcome you over at Top Music Pro. Top Music Pro is the global hub for music teachers looking to connect, learn, grow and be challenged in both their teaching and studio businesses. Community members save time by accessing hundreds of step-by-step -step lesson plans, creative teaching frameworks, business guides, online courses and workshops. We offer training in topics as diverse as music technique, lead sheets, website building, intermediate repertoire, group teaching and special needs teaching. We also save you money through our extensive discounts including those with Music Notes, Sheet Music Plus, Music Room, Office Depot, Tonebase and many more. And if you like sheet music, all our members get a free book of studio licensed, beautifully engraved sheet music each and every month. As a valued podcast listener, you can check out the Top Music Pro community free for 14 days by heading to topmusicpro.com, clicking join now on our studio tier and using the special coupon code IMTPOD23. That's all one word. So that's IMTPOD23. We can't wait to welcome you inside. So we'll help you find the right repertoire for students at all stages and ages, including methods, sheet music, collections, classical and pop repertoire, and how to stay current. And we'll also help you with a system to choose the right repertoire for the right student. In our certification that we'll be talking about next week, we have two learning objectives that speak to the repertoire pillar of the framework. One is to examine standard repertoire and identify pedagogical themes in that repertoire. And we have a second one that is to identify the pros and cons of multiple method books, choosing the best fit for each student. So E stands for educational journey the pathway, the roadmap. How do you design an individual curriculum for your students that helps them achieve their goals in a progressive way with music at the right level of challenge along the way? How do you go about planning out a curriculum long-term? This is such a fundamental question because it's not something that any of us are really taught how to do very well, particularly if we've received no formal training. And it's critical, really critical for engagement of the student, for retention, for progress. There's so many aspects of our student success that hinges on our ability to design a curriculum that's tailored to each individual student's and also that suits their unique goals and interests. So where in, in this step, we're gonna help you connect the right pieces with the right steps of the learning path and how to extend that into a longer term plan. As Jana on our team uh, has told me, she says, many teachers who have the goal of their intermediate students reaching advanced levels focus solely on repertoire and technique at the intermediate level. And certainly those two components should be the core of piano lessons as being physically able to play pieces at the piano is what most students want to gain from their lessons. However, unless a student is also receiving a strong musical education outside of private lessons, so that's in their school context, and we all know that Sadly, school music education uh, here in Australia, certainly, and I think the same in many parts of the world, is, is struggling. It's in decline. There are fewer music teachers. There are fewer classroom programs. Uh, so it's really important that we're not only covering those higher level things, but also all those skills that I say are what make up the bulk of the iceberg that is holistic music teaching. For those of you who are unfamiliar with my metaphor, the tip of the iceberg is the traditional classical view of music education, which is it's about reading, performance and interpretation. And those skills are critical and important, but they don't make up, in my opinion, the bulk of what makes a music lesson holistic. Those are all the rest of the iceberg, the under the waterline part of the iceberg. Uh, and Jenna calls these functional skills, you might have used that term. So things like uh, playing a melody or chord progression by ear, harmonizing a melody, improvising, transposing, uh, reading lead sheets and chord charts, playing it in a sample ensemble, accompanying other students, uh, trying to play different instruments. I mean, there's so many other skills that can link in to this puzzle that is a holistic approach to teaching. And these skills are super critical and we have to have a way, even theory and sight reading as well, oral skills, we have to have a way to incorporate these into that educational journey in order for students to make sure that they are progressing. And as Jana also said to me, functional skills like these enable students to serve their communities in a musical context. I think this is fundamental. 
They also allow for students to be more creative and to take more ownership of their own music making, therefore increasing motivation and satisfaction. There's so much to this pillar of the Presto framework. Uh, this is just really having a look at the surface. And this is a big one that we go into in more depth in the certification program with a critical learning objective, which is to assess students and design a curriculum or plan of teaching to achieve students' goals while measuring and tracking student progress. Now, if that's something that you've really not put all that much thought into, then you're not alone. That is really, really common. Uh, and I think one of the biggest missteps we can make in uh, the work we do with students is not really having a bigger plan, longer term plan. And by longer term plan, it's all very well knowing what you want to do in five years or where you want a student to get in eight years. But we also have to have regular milestones and check-ins and we have to set learning objectives and work out how we're actually going to assess those milestones and keep the progress moving forward. So that's what the E step in the Presto framework is all about. Okay, on to S, which stands for Studio Setup. This is the first of our two business pillars in the Presto framework. Studio Setup, it's the often underrated but essential area for any music teacher. So this is where you learn how to structure your business, nail your finances and create efficient systems that work for you. But in order to do that, you really have to know what your goals are. Um, and so we're going to be covering two main goals here, your own financial and business goals and also the goals that you want for your student because both of them will determine or should determine both how you structure what you do and how you teach but also the kinds of things you offer, for example, summer camps or events or group classes, whatever it is. Will you be a traveling teacher or a studio-based teacher? Will you teach groups one-on-one? -on -one? Will you do 30-30-30s? Will you mix things up? How can you automate your admin to save time? Many teachers fall into teaching without much of a plan and little business administration or marketing experience or training. And for this reason, some teachers do struggle. So understanding a little bit about finances how to find new students, which we'll be talking about even more in the O pillar, uh, is really critical for a studio. So there are two learning objectives in our certification that speak to this pillar of the framework. The first is to strategically choose the studio structure, policies and offerings that best meet the goals of your studio and your business. So thinking about the teaching environment, the philosophy and mindset around what you're doing, the studio structure on pairs, groups, individual summer camps, workshops, special events, but also things, crucial things, critical things that are so often overlooked, like legal considerations, insurance, company structure, trial protection, mandatory reporting, and of course, studio policies. And the second learning objective is to establish efficient financial systems for your teaching studio and business. And we look at that in depth in the certification, financial literacy, understanding budgets and profit and loss and superannuation tax requirements, and also how to simplify all of that using software. Okay, we're down to the last two pillars. So the T pillar stands for technique. Teaching technique is fundamental to the playing of any instrument or sport or any number of things really, isn't it? It's vital that you explore the various approaches out there and adopt one that feels that suits your teaching and is appropriate for the student because one size doesn't fit all, of course. It's also important to know about multiple approaches for when different students need different help or you need to try tackling a challenge from a different angle. No single approach will work for every student and that's why we'll look at all the different options available to you. And then you can take parts that you like, ditch the parts that you don't, make informed choices with all the tools at your disposal. And I think technique is one of those things that often challenges teachers because there are so many differing views out there about arm weight versus finger movement where you start when you read on the piano, what the hand alignment is like, uh, when and how you drop into keys. I'm, I'm talking piano, obviously, specifically here. Um, how you taper and shape phrases, the lift of the wrist and the arm and the movement, all of these things. There are so many differing opinions out there. But what I've learned over the last 12 years is that there are also some critical fundamental things that all teachers pretty much agree on, even if they say things in different ways. And it's super important that those become the foundational pillars of your own approach to technique. And from that, you then can have the experience that we give you certainly in the certification of knowing about the different approaches. And so you can pull in ideas uh, from different 
ways of teaching to suit various different student challenges that come up. But there will be uh, these fundamentals. And our learning objective around technique is to identify and apply the most appropriate technique approach for each student. And that means having these foundational techniques that you agree and is necessary and important for all students. And then to be able to manage uh, an array of supplementary activities and approaches that can suit any student. Okay, the final step in the Presto framework, the final pillar is O for outreach. Or we might call it marketing. And this final pillar will help you get your studio name out there in the community and building your studio numbers, whether that's starting from scratch, maintaining a wait list, or if you want to, growing big. Marketing your studio, studio events in your town, recitals, concerts, cross promotions, connecting with your local community. We're going to be exploring all those options. We'll help you find the special source that makes your studio really stand out from the crowd. And we're going to bottle that up and flavor everything that you put out into the world with a marketing strategy that brings in your ideal students. It's important to know that marketing is an ongoing process or it should be. I often think of McDonald's and Coca-Cola. You know, they're still marketing all the time, even though, you know, I, I would have thought that if they stopped marketing, I'm pretty sure their sales would go on and on. But then again, eventually their sales would decline because other people would come out and provide opportunities and options and put them in the front of people when Coke or McDonald's isn't doing that. And it's just kind of goes to show, I guess, that even for big companies, big business, they have to keep reminding people of what they offer. And it's the same for us. So even if you do have a long wait list or you've got lots of, lots of students already in your studio or you've got enough, there is always a time in the future that things may change. You may need to move. You may suddenly lose half your studio numbers. Uh, I know it happens because I see it on Facebook groups. Suddenly teachers are down five students or eight students or 10 over summer and they suddenly are very worried. And that's often because if we rest on our laurels around marketing because our studio is really functioning, uh, we're not preparing for what might happen in the future and you just never know quite what's going to be coming around the corner. And so that ongoing marketing outreach is critical for any teacher, regardless of the size of your studio or wait list for that matter, or how popular you are or any of those kinds of things. So in the certification, we're speaking to that through our learning objective that is to set up a marketing system that brings in new leads into your studio on autopilot. And so it's really important to be considering things like your website, brand that you have, uh, but also the word of mouth marketing, the community partnerships and cross promotions that you can do in your local area. And also just your brand. What is the brand saying? How is it different from your competitors? These are all the kinds of things that are critical for that O outreach section of the Presto framework. So that's it. That's an overview of the new framework that we'll be using to underpin much of what we do here at Top Music in the coming months and certainly into next year. And as I say, underpinning the certification. Now, I've mentioned the CERT program a few times now. We've been working incredibly hard on it recently uh, as we put it together. And by we, I mean, uh, you may have listened, in fact, to episode, I think it was 304 on the podcast when I brought on our instructional designer, Kimberly, who is an ex-piano teacher, funnily enough, and an incredible instructional designer who has been challenging me all the time as we put this together to make it an absolutely incredible experience. This is like nothing else that is out there. Uh, it is underpinned by the most modern approaches to adult learning and I can't wait to take you through it. And I'm going to be doing that next week. So stay tuned. Uh, all the details, well, most of the details will be revealed next week about what's happening. Uh, and as I say, the first cohort, we're piloting this with our members. Uh, so that will be available to members coming up if you're a member and you're listening. You'll be able to jump in and find out more about that uh, this month, June, and then we'll be starting in July. And then if you're not a member, that's totally fine. You'll be welcome to join us as well. But that will be for our first public cohort, which will be launching in January next year. So do stay tuned for that. And that's it for today. I would love to hear questions, comments. What do you think about Presto? Does it make sense? Which is the bit, the step, the pillar that you perhaps would struggle with the most, which is the easiest for you. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, find us on any of our social media channels. Just search for topmusic.co. 
uh, YouTube, socials, Facebook, uh, or of course, you can head to the show notes for today's episode and leave a comment. That might be the easiest place to go. That's the topmusic.co slash episode 332. We'd love to hear from you over there. Until next week, I'm Tim Topham and you've been listening to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast. Can't wait to speak to you again next week. Bye-bye. How do you keep up to date with all the latest trends and research in music education? How do you connect with other teachers around the world and make sure your teaching stays fresh and relevant for students of all ages and stages both now and into the future? I created our Top Music Pro membership to be the one-stop shop for music teaching resources, training, support and community and I'd love for you to come and join us inside. With over 40 comprehensive training courses, hundreds of teaching demonstrations and lesson plans, free monthly sheet music, discounts and all the business and pedagogy support you could ever need, Top Music Pro is the community you've been looking for. If you're ready to level up your learning from the podcast and join thousands of other teachers in our global network, head over to topmusicpro.com today. If you enjoy this show and want to hear more of our work, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening today. For links and resources mentioned in this episode, visit us at topmusic.co slash podcast or check out the show notes. I'm Tim Topham and this is the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast, a production of Top Music. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your week ahead and I'll catch you next time.